Hi, everybody. Do you remember a couple weeks ago in class, one of the things I had you do was I asked you to make a rough draft of a resume. I told you to hold on to it that we were going to take a look at it a little bit later on um, after we talked about best practices. Well, now it's later on. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, first get out our Chromebooks. So I'm going to have you get those out. And I'm going to have you uh, pull up your notes for class. And as you will see on the top of our screen now, we have our daily objectives. And our daily objectives are going to be um, one of them. And it's what does an employer look for when reviewing submitted resumes for positions available? And as you uh, see what we're going to talk about today uh, and the uh, activity I'm going to have you do, it's really going to have you think about those things because I'm asking you to think about it, um, your resume through the eyes of an employer. What does an employer look for when they're looking at these resumes? That rough draft that you did, you did it um, without any sort of guidance from me. You really just kind of Googled uh, and, and looked up different resumes and kind of went with whatever was the best out there and put your information in, I give you no guidance on it. And then I taught you best practices. And I said, now this is what you should maybe put into your resume. And this is why we put it there. And this is how the formatting you should use and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to have you evaluate those two and uh, look at, you know, why did we do it the way that we did? So hopefully you got the um, objective down in your notes um, at this point and as you can see the next thing that we have on our list for today is our resume evaluations so open up Google classroom and I want you to find your rough draft of your resume assignment in there so if we go to Google Classroom, you will find um, in there early on you had to do the resume rough draft. So that's what I want you to open up is your resume rough draft and I want you to have it um, up on the screen. Your sub is going to be passing out for you um, this handout. And on this handout you will find that it's two-sided. Uh, but they both look the same. And this side says resume rough draft or sorry, resume rubric, rough draft versus final draft. And it's a rubric and it's kind of laid out and it says, okay, let's evaluate our resume on format and layout, um, style, content, grammar, vocabulary, mechanics. And then I have the rating going all the way from excellent down to four. And I need you to really take some time and read through these different points as to why it, it's there. Then the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to either take a highlighter or a pen or pencil, it doesn't really matter to me which you use, and I want you to, on one side, I want you to mark or circle rough draft, and then on the other side, I want you to go ahead and mark or, or highlight final draft, okay? So do that on, on one side and, and then do, oops and then do the uh, opposite on the other side. Make sure you put your name in the upper right hand corner of the sheet and um, then what I want you to do is on one side of the handout I want you to look at that rough draft and I want you to evaluate it. Um, 0 to 10 uh, giving it a ranking for all of these. Put the score in this column here, add it up on the bottom and then flip the sheet over and then do the same thing with your final draft, which is also in the Google Classroom. Um, at least it should have been submitted through there. Um, do the same thing, look through it, uh, give it a score, add it up, and put the score down here as well. When you get done doing that for both of them, I want you to go ahead and turn it into the basket on my desk. Um, and then when you're done, I want you to come back to the video, okay? Okay, now that you've had a chance to kind of go through and, and do the evaluation, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what you just did. Um, 
first question that I have up here on the board is, are there different ways to do resumes? Well, obviously. I have a, a bet that your rough draft looks very different from the final draft that I showed you. Um, it may not, it might, for some of you it might look very similar, but for many of you it probably looks very different from what uh, the final draft looks like. Uh, depending on what you're going to go into, a graphic designer might have a resume that is um, very different looking even from what, um, from what a standard resume might be. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do resumes. Um, there isn't one best way, but there are certainly best practices uh, that many of you uh, would, I, I would recommend that you would follow. Um, what would be some of the reasons for different for using a different resume format? Uh, well, I just gave you the answer for, for that as well. Uh, depending on what job it is that you're applying for, that could be a reason that you could use a different resume format. Um, another reason for using a different resume format, if you guys think back to when I did the PowerPoint with you on resumes, one of the things that we talked about was there are three different styles of resumes, right? Um, the chronological, the functional, um, and then the combination. Uh, think about it. When we said that there was the chronological format, we said that that focused in on what? We said that it focused in on dates. Well, if it focuses in on dates, that means that we've worked someplace for a long time. And so I might use a chronological format to show that I've, I've worked someplace for a long time. When we used a functional resume, we said that that focused in on, and hopefully some of you said, skills. So if I'm a fresh graduate, I may want to use a functional resume because that's really going to tell me a lot about skills and the latest education and the training that I've had. Or if I haven't been out in the workforce, that's maybe one that I want to use. So um, those might be some reasons why I use different resume formats. What are some ways that we change resumes? Um, and I have up here already, I kind of show you, by putting schooling up towards the top of resume. Mine, for example, schooling is very important in my line of work. Uh, and so I changed my, even though I use the combination resume format, I put schooling up uh, before my work experience because in my line of work, I have to have a certain degree in order to do the job. So that's how you can change your resume by putting that up, um, the location of where you put things in there. Um, that's one way that you can change resumes. How do you know which one to do? Well, consider the expectations of the employer and the common guidelines that make the information easy to obtain. So again, considering what the uh, employer is looking for, that's going to tell you which one it is that uh, you should do. And again, what is your background? Are you a new graduate? Have you been out in the workforce? All that sort of stuff is going to help you to determine which sort of resume you're going to do in the future. All right, the next thing that I want you to do um, in the next, and, and I'm going to give you about eh, 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You probably don't need more than that. But the next thing that I have listed here is digital portfolio. And so what I want you to do is um, I want you to open up your uh, graduation portfolio that you guys have been working on all year. And now I want you to go to that um, career section and that, that career tab. And you will find in there uh, where it has a number of things listed and all the times that all the years so far you've been looking at going, I'm not sure what I'm putting in there. Well, now you know what you're putting in there. Well, guys, we've already done the cover letter. We've done the research paper. We've done the resume. And you've just got uh, finished with doing the reference sheet. So now what I want you to do is I want you to create some links into it. I'm going to show you real quickly how to do some of those links. So why don't you guys pull that up for me real quick and let me talk you through how to do some of that stuff. Okay, guys, so what you're going to do is once you have your site opened up, um, as I mentioned, you're going to come over here to careers and you're going to click on it. You're going to bring this one up and, it, and you're going to find that in here you have cover letter, resume, reference sheet, um, career research paper. Down here we have a couple others like um, artifacts. Now down here you can add things like um, we're going to be doing an interview. You can put your interview documentation down here. Um, you can put, be putting other things like um, the um, airless application which I have graded and in the graded paper basket that you can pick up. 
um, or anything else um, that is related at all to careers you can put in the bottom part here so but let me show you how you're going to do some of the links to this so we have this where I'm going to start doing some editing and so I'm going to highlight some of these things so I'm going to pick my resume and I'm going to highlight it and once I have it highlighted um, I I'm going to go up to this screen or go up to the menu bar up here and the link button should be here if it's not here I can also go up to insert and the link button should appear for me here once I click on it it's going to say sites pages or web address and I actually want to go to web address now I have to have my link for the URL to put in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up I'm going to open up another tab up on top and you'll see I actually have already done this. I went into my drive and I um, opened up um, my I opened up my resume that's in there. You'll laugh because I just kind of did a mock uh, docu document here and I just wrote my resume. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to highlight the link here and that link is what's going to go in however I want to remind you because people are always forgetting to do this you have to change the share settings here uh, so first go to your share settings and we have to go into advanced now we want it so that anyone with this link can view it so we have to go up to change and click on on anyone with the link and let me bring this down so you can see it and now once I select anyone with the link we want to allow them to view we don't want them to edit guys because this is yours we just want them to view and say save it actually is going to give me the link here so I can just simply copy this link and then just say done Go back to um, go back to my tab now that is my uh, um, portfolio and put the link in there, uh, which is not that obviously. Sorry. I'll just copy this one. Copy. I guess you know which class I was working on before this. Oh, heavens to Betsy. All right, well, you get the idea. You're going to end up, <laughs> you get the idea. You're going to end up pasting the, the link in there. Um, and then you would say, okay, and that's going to hyperlink this. Okay, and then you would say save. Um, and that's how you're going to create your link for each of these things. You'll do the same thing with your reference sheet and the same thing with your research paper. You just simply have to have the links open up here, go in, change your share settings. Once you have the share settings changed, copy those links and put them in. So go ahead, take about 10, 15 minutes, uh, link these things. After you get these things linked, uh, you can take a quick five minute break, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, come back in. Once you get that done, then we're gonna work on starting to create a digital portfolio that you would end up using for on the job, going out and applying for a job, okay?